happy Friday or Saturday, depending on when you are watching this. So today I'm going to share my Ego Management 2021 update, which I've been talking about for a couple weeks now. So if you are not familiar with my book, Life Without Envy, you don't have to read the book, but watch the videos I've made on YouTube. And um, if you're not already signed up for my mailing list, I have a mini workbook in there. So between those two things, like that'll you know take you a long way towards understanding what this is, the concept of ego management, and how you can implement those strategies for satisfaction, creative satisfaction in your own life. So that's where I'm coming from with ego management. So here's the thing that is kind of mind blowing. If it is in my best interest, speaking emotionally, spiritually, not to take rejection personally, which I've spoken about before, it is also in my best interest not to take success personally either. What do I mean by that? How, how can I reasonably define myself as a creator, my worth as a creator, by a fortuitous sequence of events? I can't because conventional success is largely, mostly, almost all, I mean, you have to do the work obviously, but beyond that, it's outside of your control. And therefore, you cannot reasonably pin your sense of self upon something that so easily could have gone a different way. So I wanted to share this sequence of, this fortuitous sequence of events with you to use myself as an example. So back in 2013, book came out in 2015, St. Martin's Press wanted to publish Bones and All. Then after it came out, a couple of wonderful things happened. A bunch of lovely librarians, thank you, you know who you are, voted to give the book an Alex Award. And also a literary agent slash film producer, AKA my fairy godmother, found Bones and All at an industry conference, took the book back to her hotel room and devoured it, pun possibly intended, cared enough about the story to set this fortuitous sequence of events into motion in terms of making the film, right? So here's the thing. There are so many other <clears throat> compelling novels that she could have just as easily picked up at that conference, right? And she could have been completely captivated by one of those books. And she could have felt so passionately about that book that, you know, we could be talking about a film adaptation of one of those books instead. Again, coming back to what I was saying earlier about deser deservingness is several months ago, I made a video about deservingness Sure, I've been at this for 20 years. I deserve this. So do lots of other authors I know. So I am not hot shit. And I've done the work so that I don't have to keep reminding myself that I'm not hot shit, hot shit right? So being on the film set was a wonderful experience for the, the reasons that you would expect and also for the reasons that you might not expect, which is that I felt deeply, deeply humbled because as Dave, screenwriter Dave, my bestie, as he put it, I am the first link in a chain of creativity. 
And so I show up on set and there's like 150 plus people working on this project that yes, it started in my imagination, but so many things outside of my control had to happen in order for us to all be here at this time creating this film and each of those people are bringing their A game to the endeavor, right? And it doesn't matter that it all started in my head. I'm no more of a VIP than anybody else on this film set because we need this massive collaboration in order for you to buy that film ticket next year and go and see the movie. So I think that that is, I think that's, that's everything that I have to say for this week. Next week, I'm gonna do something a little different. I want to present the contrast of where I was at, at head and heart wise back in 2006 when I got my deal for my debut novel versus where I was at head and heart wise in the Whole Foods checkout line when I got the text from my agent back in January that this movie was actually going to happen. Because the contrast is really stark and I think, you'll, I think it'll be really useful and inspiring for you. So that's what I'm gonna talk about next week. But if you have any thoughts about anything I've said here, you, you know, success is not yours. It belongs to not just your mother, but a whole lot of other people who are making it happen for you. Let me know, drop me a comment if you have any suggestions for, you, you folks have been so good about um, suggesting sort of tangential like spin-off um, uh, riffs that I could do, you know, related topics. So drop those in the comments or send me a DM if you have any, if you have any suggestions. Um, hey Megan, oh I'm sorry I missed your, I'm sorry I missed your messages because I'm really bad at checking those when I'm blah, blah, blah. So thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope that this was inspiring for you. Um, let me know if there's anything about this whole, like, you know, mind-blowing, like, can't take success personally either. Um, if there's anything about my story that particularly resonated for you, leave me a comment. Thank you so much again for watching and I will be back next week with another video.